Welcome to The Robin Graham Show, the podcast for purpose-driven women who want to achieve sustainable success without having to be on social media. Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. All right. You know, I get excited so easily, especially when I'm going to have a great conversation. But today's guest is super special to me because she is a client and she also interviewed with us back in episode 339. So I will have a link to that in the show notes, but I do encourage you to go back and listen to that episode as well. So you can get to know even a little bit more about Molly Claire. But Molly Claire and I are going to have a conversation today, and this this all came out of um, some work we're doing to help launch her program that she's launching in the fall, which she's going to tell you about, and she's going to have a webinar and all these good, good things that you could even attend. But our, during a conversation and during a recent podcast episode that she did that we were working through some of the details on when we were talking, it was very evident that she's very passionate about thought work, and this thought work has a lot of misconceptions around it out in the industry of coaching. And so we're going to bust some of those, I guess you could say myths around what thought work is and the power of thought work, but how it can actually be detrimental when not done right. So it's going to get a little bit deep, but I promise it won't be super long and it's not going to be over your head. We're going to give you some true, true actionable strategies that you can walk away today and start practicing within your own life on a daily basis to improve your mindset, which you may not even know you have mindset problems. Um, However, most of us get in our own way at one point in time or another. So these are just strategies that you you can think about, you can look at, and if you're a life coach, maybe even implement in your own coaching practice. Without further ado, Molly Claire, welcome back to the Robin Graham show. Oh, Robin, this is so fun because the first time we talked, I was just getting to know you. Of course, since that time I've hired you and now I'm I'm chatting with you on a daily basis, pretty much more or less <laughs> um, in my business. So this is great. And I'm really excited to be here with all of you and and really help you with this. Yeah, it's going to be so good. And you guys, I, I'm going to give Molly the opportunity, actually, I asked her to do this, to tell a little bit about what it's like to work with me behind the scenes. Um, she's such a go-getter and she has an established business, but sometimes even though we are so established, there's little nuances in our business that maybe we didn't realize for hangups or weren't flowing the way they were supposed to flow, whatever. And sometimes it's just having somebody to talk to. So I'm going to let Molly or ask Molly to tell a little bit about what it's like to work with me. Oh my gosh. So, you know, when, when we talked, uh, when I interviewed you on my podcast, of course, we talked about something that, that Robin speaks to all of you about, which is that we can build a business without social media. And it was like everything I heard you talking about, I knew I needed it. I It resonated with me. And the biggest thing for me that drew me to working with you was knowing that you are genuinely interested in serving your clients and in encouraging me to serve my clients in a way that is in line with who I am and what I have to offer and really making space for it. So that brought me in and, and it's been, it's been fantastic, you know, working with you, Robin, first of all, I know you're always thinking of me. I know you're praying for me and my business and, um, and I just, it's so fantastic to know that you're always there in my corner. You're always encouraging me to make choices that feel in alignment for me rather than just telling me what to do only from that expert perspective. And so that space is there and really just knowing that I can always go to you for those little things. I just feel very taken care of, very watched over and not to mention, I think we have a lot of fun personally. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, it is laughter is the best medicine, right? Yes. Yes. And sometimes I think we have to laugh at the things we don't know or the things that we did Mm -hmm. that didn't make sense or Mm -hmm. whatever the case Mm -hmm. may be. And sometimes it's just rambling messages on Voxer that (laughs) are really funny. (laughs) This is true. This is true. 
Um, but I think, I mean, really, because I think that there are a lot of business coaches out there. There are a lot of ways that I can get help and ways that I do. But, and one thing that I just, I really appreciate about you specifically is the way you encourage me to, to make sure I am bringing me into my business, because I think it can be really easy for us as women in general to, um, look to an expert over our own intuition or knowing or what we're feeling called to. And that has never been the case here. And I think it's rare and I think it matters a lot. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. That means the world to me because I, I do pour my heart and soul into everyone that I work with because it's so important for me, not only that you have this financial success, it's, it's the personal life. It's the, it's the day-to-day decision-making. It's the things that really impact your life as a whole, plus the people that it's going to have a trickle effect on, trickle down effect on, right? Like it's, yeah. And at the end of the day, we're called, we have a purpose. Every single one of us has a purpose. And the more we can serve other people with a purpose, the better the world's going to be. And we need a better world right now. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that I just, the more, the more clients I work with and the more I see this come out in them, I, I just can see it and feel it that people have such incredible gifts within them. And it's like when we ourselves can unlock it and help others unlock it for them it does change the world. Mm-hmm. And we can all really use our gifts for good. Yeah. So yeah. Molly, on that topic, you know, we can't really use our gifts if we are sitting in a space of muddled thoughts or negative thoughts or doubting what is possible for us. So we hear a lot of talk about thought work. And I know we've had episodes on this as well. We've had episodes on like mindset modeling and all those things. And they're all very important. And I think mm-hmm. you and I share a perspective that it isn't just about the thought work. There's more to it. And there's a spiritual component to it. And there, there's a knowing and there's there's a, a, a calling on our inner being, so to speak, um, besides just those thoughts to be able to change our outcomes. But what happens oftentimes um, is that thought work can be detrimental. And you're an expert at this. And I would love for you to share your thoughts on that. Yes. So um, there are so many things I could say. I think that, I think first I'll just touch a little bit on my perspective on the power of mindset work used really well. And then kind of the, I don't know if I want to say the flip side of that, but this this, um, also this other existing truth and reality about the big picture of, of using thought work. So thought work is right. Thought work, mindset work, belief work. We hear a lot about it and we hear things like think, feel, do right. Or think, feel, be. And there are verses in the scriptures about the power of our thoughts. And so We know that our thoughts are powerful. We know intentional thinking is powerful. And in fact, there's a therapy model, cognitive behavioral therapy, that talks about thoughts creating feelings and feelings driving actions. Mm -hmm. And so if we think about it, all of us want to feel better. All of us want to do better things. And so if the key to that is looking at the way we're thinking, rather than trying to just change that end piece, right, of just doing something different. Well, why not back up and take a look at those thoughts? So that's kind of my overview as to really why looking at the way we're thinking and seeing what it's creating and understanding our mindset and see what it's either making possible or limiting is a big deal. And when you work with a coach who is highly skilled with using thought work well, it really is a game changer, 100%. So there's that that side of it. <laughs> um, and so having said all of that, I trained as a basically thought work only coach 10 years ago when I started my business. And it was incredible. I mean, I mean, truly so much opened up and I could see where I had 
thought patterns that were not helpful for me and um, ways that I was very stuck, ways I was very frustrated. And so I immersed myself in this. I, you know, even to the extent that I got master certified training coaches, training master coaches, so involved in it because I could feel the power in it. And, um, you know, just from a spiritual perspective, and I, I speak about my spirituality in a very neutral way, because that's important for me to create that within my client base for them for, for, you know, just to allow them space to own their own spirituality and beliefs. Um, but anyway, you know, even back then, from a spiritual standpoint, my perspective also was very much that, you know, when we think about free will and making choices, to think we can make choices about our thoughts and change our lives is a pretty big deal, right? In, in, a, in a way, we can really align with our spiritual or religious beliefs as well. Um, but anyway, having said that, you know, I go all in on this, this thought work to the extreme. And I say that because while thoughts create feelings, it's not true that all feelings are created from thoughts. And this really matters because if, and I don't know if any of your listeners relate to that, but if, if I am always frustrated with myself because I am thinking, it's just a thought that is causing this feeling and I've got to figure out the thought and I've got to fix it and I can't fix it. We can, we can go in circles of frustration trying desperately to change thoughts or feelings when the, where we need to be focusing is actually somewhere totally different. So does that make sense? I'll keep going, but I, I want to make no, sure. It, it, okay. I mean, to me, it makes total sense. And yeah. I think the, the biggest thing that I think we need to recognize if someone is constantly tell us, telling us to go back to our thoughts, but there's actually something that is triggering an emotion mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. we're not recognizing. And that could be a relationship. It could mm -hmm. be past experience. It could be a trauma mm -hmm. that we experienced. It, mm -hmm. There's so many things that maybe, a, and, and maybe some of those things are triggering thoughts, but we have yeah. underlying emotions too. And I think- you know, our soul is yes. made up of our, of our mind, our emotions, our will, and our conscience. So those emotions can stand alone. Yes. And, you know, you said something which is true is that a feeling can then have a thought about that feeling, right? That feeling can then trigger a thought because what we need to remember is our nervous system sends messages from the brain to the body and the body to the brain. And 20% of the messages go from the brain to the body. The body is where we feel emotions. 80% mm -hmm. of the messages go from the body to the brain. So feelings can arise. And when I say feelings, I'm not talking about someone cutting themselves, right? That pain. I'm talking about emotion feelings. Emotions can arise in the body. Emotions can be remembered from past experiences. Emotions can be stored in the body. And so if we're having emotions rising in the body and we're saying, oh, let me look at the brain to change this emotion, we're missing out because that's not where the solution lies. Where the solution lies is paying attention to that emotion, right? And, and I could get into the details of it, but the bottom line is that, that um, if we are always believing that the solution is looking at our thoughts, we are missing out on paying attention to emotions that matter, paying attention to intuition, to promptings, and to honestly, we're, we're missing out on, on even understanding how the science of thoughts work. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so, and so then we're just misguided and people can, and, and it can truly, it can be detrimental. And I mm -hmm. know detrimental is a strong word and I will stand by that. And I'm happy to talk more about that, but it, it really can be detrimental to own, to believe that all thoughts are created, or I'm sorry, all feelings come from thoughts. So, you know, it's funny that we're, this experience I had yesterday working with my coach and she's, she is remarkable, but we were literally having a conversation about a decision that I'm making within my business, what I want to do next. Right. Mm -hmm. And she's, she's more of a spiritual guide for me 
Um, mm-hmm. She brings in, in scripture, but she has this incredible way. Like, I swear she has this direct line and the Holy spirit just gives her information. But she, <laughs> like, she asked me one question and I, I had this visceral reaction. Like I mm-hmm. felt this, like, like needles in my body. Right. Mm-hmm. And we mm-hmm. talked through that. And then she said something else. And my reaction was like goosebumps, like mm-hmm. the excited, happy, so mm-hmm. that, that was literally a visceral response, a response to mm-hmm. of emotions in my body about mm-hmm. situations that, mm-hmm. or about experiences that mm-hmm. my thoughts weren't thinking these about, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. about this, right? Like it, mm-hmm. it literally was physical reaction. So it's funny. We're talking about this today because that's exactly what I experienced yesterday. Yes. Yes. And the, our bodies have so much wisdom. And you know, as you were talking, it's so, this is what occurred to me as you were talking, because, you know, as you know, I teach about thoughts, emotions, the nervous system, behavior patterns, really kind of the hard, tangible science of how that stuff works. And I can study about that and I can continue to learn and more can be revealed. And I love that the space of spirituality, that that we, there is so much to learn there that can't ever be, in my opinion anyway, we know it by feeling it, by being with it, by connecting with it. And I love that the learning and understanding and the, the depth of our spiritual experience never will end. I Mm -hmm. love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we have, we have some episodes and I'll link them in the show notes. One recently was with um, Connie Strasheim and she was talking about how, um, you know, she'd had a lot of experiences with trauma and she had some significant Mm -hmm. um, health issues and how working through her spiritual life and tapping Mm -hmm. into scripture Mm -hmm. and marrying scripture with science, she healed herself. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. it just thing you hear these stories all the time, how the, the mind body soul connection is so Mm -hmm. deep. And that's Mm -hmm. just how miraculously we were made, right? Like when you Mm -hmm. think about it, we can actually take initiative to change the neural pathways in our brain, Mm -hmm. but we Mm -hmm. want to, we, we have to be cautious because we have to understand how that connection works. And I think Mm -hmm. what you said is being aware of what's happening in our body that is then triggering something in our brain and vice versa. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, one thing for sure, if people are interested in understanding more about the detrimental effects, I definitely think we should link my recent podcast episode as well. Oh, I will. Yeah. Yeah. That goes so in depth. So those of you listening, like I talk even more about that specifically. Um, But I'll just say that, you know, they, they are so interconnected, just like the systems in our body are connected. Right. And so it's like, we don't realize that the heart and kidneys are very interconnected. So if we're aggressively treating a heart issue, we can actually complicate kidney issues, right? And vice versa. And the same is true with our thoughts and feelings. And so I think about it as like being really heavy on the thought work and not attending to the emotions, not attending to the body, not attending to the spiritual. Well, guess what then? We're going to create a disruption in the system. And I'll tell you, this is what I have seen because I've been in this industry for 10 years and the first five, it was like thought work, thought work, thought work. And then I started noticing uh, problems with this in coaches that would come to me that were trained this way. And so about five years ago, I started bringing in more and bringing a nuanced approach and being, I was like, okay, people are really misusing this. And it, and it wasn't even until a couple of years later that I realized like, how big of a deal it was that people were using thought work only. Because what happens is if we're always just trying to fix or change our thoughts, there is a spiritual bypassing where we are ignoring something in our body that needs to be paid attention to. Um, 
cognitive bypassing. It's kind of like, um, and when we're doing that, when we are trying to use our brain to shut something down in our body that needs to be paid attention to, that's when our nervous system goes on high alert. So then we have that, that um, you know, this nervous system r- response clients, I was seeing clients having more of like trauma responses all the time. So here these people are that have this tool to be able to better manage and regulate their emotions and they're feeling more reactive than ever. And it was all because what started out as good learning thought work became something that was taken to an extreme and isolated away from the bigger picture. And guess what? Something inside of us and our nervous system, everything says, hold on a minute. Yeah. So it's a, it's a big deal, really. Yeah. Yeah. And I can see where as if we're suppressing emotions and, you know, I, I did a whole podcast episode on this and how, like, I'd leave like our intuition. If, if we're, if we're a a Christian, if we're faith-based, we're like, you know, we have the Holy spirit in us and he guides us. He gives us strength. He gives us wisdom. He gives us knowledge. Like that's our ultimate source. And so I did a whole podcast episode on this and how that intuition, you know, that gut feeling that's the Holy spirit telling us like something is not right. Or maybe it's that something is so good. Yes. Go for it. Do it. This is you're on target. Mm -hmm. But when we ignore those physical responses Mm -hmm. or, you know, the, the, the feelings, the emotions, Mm -hmm. like when Mm -hmm. we ignore those, Mm -hmm. I think we, we impede ourselves. Like we stop dead in our tracks. We do. And the more we're shutting down those emotions and trying to redirect the brain to think something different and feel something different, it it really does put our system, like uh, we can, we can think that, uh, like a response like that in our nervous system is a bad thing. And we just need to calm that down. I'm grateful that my nervous system has alerted me to some things, right? Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that my nervous system, all of us, our nervous system alerts us when we're being mistreated, when someone is crossing boundaries. And, um, you know, I'll give you an example that is, you know, in relation to what you were talking about with, you know, the episode you did talking about the spirit and intuition and, and being guided. And it's like, I remember, um, years ago, actually, I had just written my book and, you know, this was earlier on in my business. I had just written my book and I was helping so many women with motherhood and those struggles. And it just, it felt so alive and so just like palpable that mission there. Right. And I was working with a coach that was primarily a thought work coach and she, um, she had a different opinion about my business strategy and that I should shift my niche niche elsewhere. And I could feel this like purpose in there that I really wanted to go this direction, but because it's like thoughts are everything. Okay. Well then what I'm feeling isn't really relevant. Right. And so now I'm looking at, okay, oh, I'm doing this because I'm thinking that something else will be easier or better. And so what I really need to think is, right? So that's when we start really trying to mess with and restructure our brain in a way to eliminate paying attention to what we feel and know that needs to be paid attention to. Mm -hmm. So, and, And and, and go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, based on that example, you know, we see it all the time. People, you know, we come from that nine to five or the corporate environment or a structured role, right? Even if we're a stay-at-home mom, we're in a structured environment. We come into entrepreneurship where we're flying by the seat of our pants almost every day because you never know who's going to need what or what what's going to interfere with your schedule or whatever. And there's so many right. unknowns. So right. you're in this space where you already feel somewhat overwhelmed. You already, because of the world inundating you with shoulds and do's and don'ts and this, that, and the other, you know, you, you experience doubt in comparison, sometimes imposter syndrome, and all of those things are very, very real. But if you're already confused Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. frustrated Mm -hmm. or overwhelmed or overthinking or questioning, Mm -hmm. if you don't recognize the feelings within your body, that's going to escalate. Mm -hmm. And then what Mm -hmm. happens? You are stagnant because you literally can't put one one thought in front of another thought, one mm-hmm. foot in front of another foot to actually take intentional action. 
-hmm. and be purposeful. Yes. Yes. I mean, and you know, that's why, that's why I love the work that I do because, you know, there, there are, there are emotions that are caused by thoughts that are not helpful thoughts for us. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the solution is understanding there is, there is a bit of a swirl going on in my mind that I can pump the brakes on. Right. And other times it really is that the emotion needs to be paid attention to. And so it's just, it's not cut and dry. It's, it's just absolutely not cut and dry. But I do think that the more, the more we can pay attention to our thoughts and what am I thinking? What is it creating for, you know, for me? And and also where is this coming from? I think sometimes when we can ask a question like that to ourselves, it will sometimes show us if it's, well, this is just coming from a way of thinking that I don't really like, or, oh, this is coming from something a little bigger down here. Right. And then that's, that's when we know that's what we need to attend to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, so. I love it. Okay. This was, it was a little deep, but it was very powerful. Would you agree? Yes, I would agree. You know, it's, it's challenging to see from my perspective, because of course, when I do this work, I'm spending a year with my clients working on right. The thoughts and emotions and the nervous system. And so there's, there's so much there. And so my, my hope is that for your, for your audience, it's, it's relatable, right? At that, at that surface level, at a practical level, I want it to be. And then also, you know, making room for, there's so much more to discover as we continue to think through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I learn something new every day. And I think the most incredible thing is how it, it, you know, scripture and science are not separate anymore. Like, you know, they're, there there's a space and, and, and they both fit into the inside this box that, and we have to be aware of that mind, body, soul connection. It, there is just no question that it's, it's the full thing. It's the full picture. Um, I don't say that as eloquently as I wish I could, but it's just, it's so important and I get so passionate about it. Okay. So Molly, you have an online course related to these four components, right? I do. Yes, I do. And we can link it in the show notes. It is a four part workshop, an advanced coaching workshop. And so of course, any of your listeners can listen and, and gain something from it because I'm talking about, you know, mindset, emotion, nervous system, and actions. So all of your listeners will benefit. And especially those that are coaches, because I talk about these four areas in that, in that, um, really deeper way to help them really expand their ability to help their clients. Yeah. And that, and that is the, the primary, um, listenership that we have is coaches, um, and life coaches, health coaches, you know, and coaches who could actually apply this information and, and really see benefit amongst themselves and their clients. So the other thing you have coming up is a webinar. I do have a webinar coming up. So as we're talking about this, I don't, I'm hesitant to say the exact date. I think it's going to be November 7th, but if you're listening, it will be in the show notes, right? And and of course it'll be on my, on my website. So you'll just want to register for that. And I love, love teaching those live. I love to interact with all of you, you know, and, um, and just make it a really personal experience. So I'm just really, I mean, Robin, you know this, and I know you feel the same way. I am really passionate about helping my clients helping coaches to really do a phenomenal job of supporting their clients. Because I just think people are suffering. There is so much suffering in the world and people are frustrated with their own behaviors and they're frustrated with their relationships. And they're, they're just experiencing so many of the, the effects of, you know, this really stressed out, overwhelming, crazy world we live in. Mm -hmm. And and they need our help. And I think as coaches, we have such an opportunity to be of tremendous service. And I think mm-hmm. it's a pretty big deal. Yeah. Yeah. And you're a pretty big deal, Molly. Oh. 
<laughs> I well, just had to you. throw that in there. <laughs> I just, you know, I really feel like we're just all in this together. And I think when just combining all our gifts and our abilities and everything, we just, it feels like an honor to be in this thing called humanity together and help each other out. So. Yeah, I agree. And it's been an honor for me to get to work with you too, because the work you're doing is so profound and you you really are changing the world. I mean, I know I've, I've said that to you so many times because you, you send me messages and I'm like, oh my gosh, you're changing the world, like one coach at a time. <laughs> um, but I think that, you know, at the end of the day, all of this is so important because we all have decisions to make every single day and we yep. need to be able to discern right? That discernment is key. Where, where is this coming from? Is this coming from my intuition? Is this coming from what God's telling me? Is this coming from a thought because I've heard someone else say it? Like, where is mm -hmm. this coming from? Because mm -hmm. then we can actually step into a place to create transformation that's going to be sustainable for ourselves mm -hmm. and for others. That's right. Okay, Molly, thank you for being here. Tell the listeners where they can find you and I will have your link to your website in the show notes as well. Okay, you can find me at mollyclaire.com, M-O-L-L-Y-C-L-A-I-R-E.com. That's it, very easy. And uh, I highly recommend that you subscribe to the Masterful Coach podcast. Um, episode 156 is where I talk about, um, you know, this thought work, um, topic. And I mean, the whole thing, the Masterful Coach podcast is chock full of information and help to improve your coaching, to have life business balance. And we have some phenomenal experts and conversations there, including yes. a conversation with you too. That's right. I, <laughs> I had Robin too. on my podcast. <laughs> That's right. All right, friends. Thank you so much for being here. As always, I'm going to ask that you please share this episode with anyone that you know will receive the value out of it that you received today. And if you feel so inclined to leave a rating and review, of course, my heart would be even more full. But let's spread the joy, share the word, spread the episode around to your friends, colleagues, peers, whatever. And I will see you all here next time. And that's a wrap, friends. A heartfelt thank you for being here. I know there are many other ways that you could spend your time. So I truly appreciate you joining me. And be sure and visit the website, therobingram.com forward slash resources for a plethora of resources to help you grow your business for long-term success.